Uh, are you mad? Yeah, you're mad. I understand. It's been a while since Dr. Wolf and I paid tribute in that Spike speculation video. Plug. And a lot's happened since then. You've had some high old adventures. And some major mess-ups. But if you'll kindly shift your focus over yonder, you'll see... Absolutely nothing! Which might seem like I'm trolling you. But in truth, I'm just diverting your attention away from my cohort. Haha! Mm. -ha! Once again, I am the master of deception. Spike occupies a unique place within MLP. The single most recurring male character, he's been both aid and hindrance. He's the butt of many jokes, and the only one having a laugh. He's been the focus of some of the worst episodes, and some of the best. What pushes this duality? Let's look at this as we go over what makes Spike special. What I said back in the day still holds true. During season 1, I didn't think that highly of Spike. Not only was he absent for most of the big events, his main goal appeared to be having a laugh at the pony's expense. We got Parody, Rainbow Crash, Spitty Pie, Apple Teeny, Flutter Guy, and... Uh... I got nothing. It's hard to genuinely like a character who comes off as so caustic, and the fact he wasn't contributing to the solutions didn't help. But then Spike began to undergo a change. He became the number one assistant. And I don't mean just the Twilight, though that's where a great deal of his best moments lie. I guess the transition started in Owl's Well that ends well, when he thought he'd lost his place beside Twilight. She... she doesn't love me anymore. I think that was the first time we saw him being emotionally vulnerable. He'd helped Rarity in a dog and pony show, but that included the promise of gems to dine upon and the chance to impress Rarity. This was the first case where we really got to see his unconditional love for another, and that's carried through. Spike has often shown his best by showing a concern for Twilight and wanting to support her without any thought of reward or recognition. Yet as the series has progressed, that sphere has expanded. Sometimes he acts as the voice of reason to settle a quarrel. How about a medium amount of dirty, not too little, not too much, just right? Sometimes it's just kind, little gestures. Aw, cheer up! The show is great! I'll get you some punch! And as the seasons go onward, Spike becomes a more reliable part of each pony's life. He often acts as the group's conscience, offering them advice for encouraging them to take steps. So, what if you stayed out a little longer with your friends? I know they'd be super excited. Out of the mouths of babes. And I think this is doubly important coming from Spike, who is constantly stuck between two worlds. I've often viewed dragons and ponies as a way to describe the difference between gender expectations. Ponies are all about friendship, emotion, and camaraderie. Dragons are presented as solitary, aggressive, and forceful. They can have positive attributes, such as the Noble Dragon Code, but it's always expressed through violence. Spike is a little bit of both, and as a result, he's the one character who seems the most unsure of his identity. Where am I from? Who am I supposed to be? Though I don't doubt that Twilight and company love him dearly, I do think it's their failing for not giving him a chance to explore what it means to be a dragon. In fact, he's been mocked for not being a dragon. Tough stain against one lame dragon. <laughs> now think about that for a sec. If Rainbow Dash wore such an apron, she'd likely be embarrassed or teased, but she wouldn't be thought of as less a pony. Why does wearing that and being helpful make Spike less a dragon? It's also curious that Spike is the only character who has shunned something for being too girly. I don't want any of that girly, frilly, frou-frou nonsense. Though he quickly changed his tune. This is gonna be the best night ever! You know why? Cause we're all gonna spend time at the gala to together! Meanwhile, Spike himself often thinks that he has to show his best by doing something grand. He daydreams of being the heroic knight. He thinks he's around to be the protector. Basket holder? I thought I was your bodyguard! Even though he is needed to be rescued as well. Does that make him less a dragon? I think not. If anything, Spike's greatest moments of heroism, including rescuing Rarity, didn't come from any desire to be top dragon or show off his strength and skill. The whole reason Spike's been celebrated has come from moments where he put others before himself, when he cared for others so much that it motivated him to act and stand firm. And I think that's important to show. A person can demonstrate their best without having to beat up the bad guy, lift mountains, or... um... Slay the evil enchantress who is only disguising herself as a giant dragon. Yes. Point is, my lad, you don't have to hurt someone else to show your best self. 
and that's something worth celebrating. In fact, you've become the champion of three worlds by doing just that. Spike became a hero to the Crystal Empire because he wanted to support Twilight as best he could, and when she couldn't go further, he assumed the burden. Same thing happened in Equestria games. Poor dude choked under the pressure when it was about his own pride, but sprung into action for the sake of others. He brought the best traits of pony life to dragons in Gauntlet of Fire. Not only did he ensure that more aggressive dragons like Garble didn't rise to power, but he effected a change in Ember. Oh, which reminds me, I have a letter from her. Ahem. <coughs> Happy special day. It's not that I like you or anything, just have a good one. Signed, the Sundre Princess. I added that last bit. And in an indirect way, Spike has helped save all of Equestria thanks to his friendship with Thorax. He set the stage for Thorax to be seen as more than an enemy. I still criticize affecting such a change through just one song, but the notion remains. The redemption of the Changeling race and Equestria Salvation wouldn't have happened if not for Spike reaching out to Thorax and finding the courage to stand up for his friend. Not a bad track record, Spike. I much prefer it to Season 4's Spike Abuse. Yeah, this got uncomfortable for a while. I enjoyed Season 4, but there was an odd theme of making Spike feel guilty, neglected, or just treating him like a lightning rod for misfortune. It likely wouldn't have felt so apparent if not for Power Ponies. Just because we don't always need your help, it doesn't mean that we don't think you're helpful. Highlighting that idea drew more attention to how often he was simply left out of further stories. It was a sour note that plagued a lot of episodes and made me doubt the show's tagline. But for all that, I can still point out at least five standout moments for Spike. Let's break it down. Coming to Twilight's aid in Lesson Zero. Protecting the defenseless egg in Dragon Quest. Calling Twilight out of Sombra's spell in the Crystal Empire. Melting an ice cloud in Equestria Games. And serving as a proxy for the audience during Pony POV. Ah, will some pony please tell me how you made it back? Actually, there are multitudinous events that I could point to where Spike has either stood out for the audience or acted as its representative. Those are just some of the big ones for me. Spike's had his fair share of flops as well. Usually it's an episode where he digs himself deeper due to his own selfishness. Problem with that is that we as an audience struggle to find someone to cheer. It's not Spike in those moments as it's more about waiting for him to wake up. Contrast that against his stronger moments and episodes where Spike may stumble, but we get the sense he's trying to do the right thing and is seeking out the right path. Those are the moments in which we celebrate you, O Dragon. You've come to represent the best of both worlds. The strength and resilience of a dragon, tempered by the compassion and balance of a pony. Who knows what you'll get into when we hit Season 7 and beyond, but I hope you know that there will be a lot of fans and other ponies cheering for you, plus one Sundre Princess. I'm Silver Quill. Thanks for watching.